Um, so, welcome everybody to our uh, presentation today, Alexa and Cortana in Windows land. Um, and we'll show you some fun ways for uh, hacking the integration between Cortana and Alexa and other partnerships. And we'll also show you some fun ways to hack into Cortana alone. And uh, my name is Amika Schulman. I've been in cybersecurity for a few years now. And together with me is Yuval Ron, a graduate student from the Technion. Uh, and we'll show you the results of a two-year research. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about the context of this research and what's Cortana. So I'll talk briefly about previous results that we had in this research. Uh, then introduce the partnership between Alexa and Cortana and how to hack it, of course. And, and then show some more vulnerabilities in Cortana itself. I'll talk a little bit about our interaction with Microsoft around the disclosure of these vulnerabilities. And we'll try to come up with some conclusions for the future. So what is Cortana? Cortana is a voice assistant. Well, everyone says it's a voice assistant like Siri, like Alexa. The reality is that this is not true. Cortana and Alexa, they are actually systems that translate human intent into computer actions. Well, they can accept human intent through voice, but they don't really care about the medium. They can do it through typing or through gestures in the future or whatever. So they can retrieve data, they can browse the web, they can launch program on your computer based on your intent, which is expressed in natural language. The voice assistants were created in the mobile device world, which means that they are emphasizing hands-free usage. Now, when you take hands-free usage into our laptops and desktop, which is what Cortana did, you imply that you are allowing operations over locked screen on your desktop. <laughs> and with that in mind, we started the research into the security effects of allowing programs to run over your locked screen, including the integration with Cortana and uh, Alexa. We came up with 17 different vulnerabilities, more than $50,000 in uh, bug bounty money. Notice that we came only with two CVEs. So 17 vulnerabilities, two CVEs. What happened there? Apparently, software vendors, they issue a CVE only when they are forced to deliver a patch to the customer. If they can fix a vulnerability on their servers in the cloud, they won't say anything. They won't say anything. And you say, OK, who cares? But everyone is safe now. The reality is that you are safe, but you do not know that there was a vulnerability. And you cannot ask yourself as a customer the question, was I affected by that vulnerability? So this is a practice I think needs to be revised. Now, uh, a little bit about Cortana. Now, Cortana is installed on our computers. There's a Cortana client on our computers. It's a fat client. That's a lot of software. It's very potent. It can run programs. It has lots of privileges. It can browse the web. It can do almost anything on your computer except one thing. It cannot make decisions. So what happens is that the client grabs the audio, sends it to the Cortana service in the cloud. It goes through speech to text. Then the text is taken and converted into intent, which are computer actions. And then based on the actions, the cloud service now distributes the commands into plugins or in Cortana language skills that are then executed again in the cloud. They take their results, put it into a format that is called a card. And that, that card is delivered back to the Cortana client as HTML and, and JavaScript 
and invokes JavaScript API on the Cortana client to do whatever there is to do, either show information or execute programs. Okay, so there is very little decision making in the client, or almost none, and most of it happens in the cloud. A lot of those plugins, those skills, are developed by Microsoft, but there is a framework along third parties to create their own skills, which create cards that are then sent to the client, and we'll talk a little bit about it in a second. So this is the architecture, and we started our journey into this research with the announcement of Microsoft that Cortana is going to run on lock screen, and, and they had security in mind. Okay, they had security in mind from the first day, and they say, for sensitive tasks or those that launch applications, Cortana will prompt you to unlock your device. So if they took care of this, Cortana must be secure, and if it is secure, we can by default have it run on lock screen. What could possibly go wrong? Uh, lots of things. Uh, we showed some results in Kaspersky SAS conference uh, a year ago, um, actually how we can browse to unsecure web servers over locked screen. And by doing that, we allow a man in the middle attack to be executed and take over the computer. We show the vulnerability in Black Hat last year that allows an attacker to take over a machine very simply, okay, um, using the invocation of Cortana. Uh, we detected the vulnerability in the third party skill framework that allowed basically anyone who wants to write a skill that takes over a machine and execute that skill over lock screen without permission of uh, the user. And there was some other vulnerabilities uh, reported by McAfee. Just to give you an idea of what a vulnerability that, like that looks like, uh, we took the reminder application. So you can say, hey, Cortana, set up a reminder. Of course, this is essential to voice assistants. Uh, it was announced the same time as Cortana Overlock screen was announced. And uh, you can see it goes hand by hand, and it looks something like that. Hey, Cortana. Set a reminder. What do you want to remember? It's not what I want to remember, it's that add a photo functionality that is so essential to reminders. Why? I don't know. But when you try to add a photo from the library, you get this search screen, open overlooked screen. So yeah, it's fun, you know, <laughs> browsing through your photos. Uh, at the same time, I can insert a USB drive into the computer. I don't need to do that, but it will help me to make things easier later. I can look not only at pictures, I can copy them into that device. It's very straightforward. I can then go and look for different documents. Maybe you have a password file on your computer. But you know, that's not interesting. What's interesting is that up there, where the drive number is, this is actually a command line. I can execute commands through there. Game over. That's, it's that simple, okay? So this is the kind of vulnerabilities that we find in Cortana itself. And for more interesting stuff, I'll pass it to Yuval. Thank you, Amichai. So, um, we saw what could happen when you have Cortana on your lock screen, but I want you just for a second imagine what will happen if you have not one assistant, not just Cortana, but also Alexa on your lock screen. So you have not one, but two voice assistants. And you can stop imagining because this already happened as part of the integration between Cortana and Alexa on your locked screen. 
And we researched this uh, partnership and found this vulnerability, which we call the Alexa in Windows land vulnerability. So a couple of words about this uh, unique partnership. Then I have to say that every partnership between Microsoft and Amazon will be very interesting, but this is especially interesting in the field of voice assistant, which is very competitive. And how it works, it, it basically allows you to launch one voice assistant from another. For example, you can say, hey Cortana, open Alexa on your Windows 10 devices. And very similar, you can say, Alexa, open Cortana over Amazon Echo devices. So on one hand, you have a lot of advantages with, uh, with this uh, integration. Now Cortana users have access to more than 50,000 new skills of Alexa. And Alexa users can now uh, use some of the very unique Cortana skills. Um, but on the other end, they also get the worst of both worlds in terms of security. And Alexa is also not perfect like Cortana. And here I want to mention a, a vulnerability that has been found by uh, researchers from uh, Checkmarks last year. They found that uh, they can implement a skill for Alexa with unlimited recording time session uh, that can play like an eavesdropper in your home and send what is happening in your home to the attacker. So we have Cortana, which can run executables on your lock screen. And now we have also Alexa, which is not perfect. And here again, what could possibly go wrong when you have such assistant on your lock screen? And we found some uh, interesting stuff. Uh, the first one, allows you to open, simply open a browser on your log screen. This is a customized uh, Internet Explorer browser. And it has happened when you try to uh, launch Alexa for the first time on your log screen. You are requested to sign in into your Amazon account. And the way uh, Microsoft decided to implement it is by opening this uh, browser, which, of course, the, the damage of such a thing is very obvious. You can uh, navigate to your own malicious website, download uh, payloads and uh, execute them. And if you have also a little bit of luck, you can access some of the social accounts of the victim and maybe the browser has saved the, the credentials of the, of the site. Then here is another uh, short demo. Hey, Open Alexa. Right now, uh, we are requested to sign in into the Amazon account. And this is the customized Internet Explorer browser. You can see that there is no URL uh, above. So you cannot simply navigate to your uh, desired uh, website. But you can abuse this interface by clicking some uh, of the links. And here you can see that we're basically in the Amazon website. And from here, it's a little bit it requires a little bit effort to navigate to your own uh, website. But here, for example, we search for an item. It, uh, it, must, it, shouldn't be, it, it can be other stuff than a black hat. And here you can see that next to the item, we found uh, images of uh, Facebook and Twitter, which you can share this item on different social accounts. And here we navigated into the Facebook. And just in a second, we'll see an example of how this browser is saving the cached credentials. Logging into an existing account. And there is already the cache credentials of the user. Even if it doesn't save them, the attacker can log in into his own account and then send himself a link and access his own malicious website. So what we've seen until now is how you can execute code, how you can open a browser on your lock screen. But let me ask you a question. What is the thing that attackers love the most? Money. Right, exactly. <laughs> Show me the money. And we found a very creative way to steal money from your lock screen using this partnership. And this very simple way is using the donation skill of Alexa, which goes like this. You can simply say, hey, Cortana, open Alexa, 
and then ask her to donate up to $5,000 to a specific charity. And this was very uh, amazing when we saw that it actually works on your lock screen. And moreover, if we look into the Alexa default settings, we can see that uh, this option is enabled by default, the ability to purchase by voice, and also the uh, setting of setting a, vo a voice code is disabled by default. So you can imagine that you left your computer locked in your locked room, and someone simply bypass your room and shouts, hey, hey Cortana, open Alexa and donate money to a specific charity, and it will work by default. And to make matter worse, uh, attackers can also open their own charity by using this form and then donate themselves uh, money. So I would like to mention two important things about this, uh, about this design failures. Um, first, it happens because Alexa is designed to increase Amazon uh, online sales by voice. This is why uh, voice processing is enabled by default. And also, uh, Alexa doesn't know the term of a locked screen because Alexa is usually running on smart speakers that are located in someone's home. And to put uh, suddenly this voice assistant in a new world of a locked screen, this is what happens. So a short timeline uh, of this vulnerability, it was released in August 15. Two weeks later, we reported them about this vulnerability, and they fixed it very quickly. Um, again, with the cloud update, they also gave us a nice bug bounty, and they decided to remove Alexa from the lock screen. So now we are done with Alexa, but there are more integrations between Cortana and other services, for example, with Spotify. And maybe you can think that in the previous uh, results of Alexa, Microsoft simply didn't, didn't uh, want, it was a mistake that Alexa worked on the lock screen. But here you can see that this integration between Cortana and Spotify, this picture is taken from the Spotify website and they're really proud that Spotify works on your lock screen. And here again, when we try to open Spotify, there is again a link, uh, there's again a button that want us to link to Spotify, clicking on it, and we get again the same connecting to a service uh, interface. And we haven't stopped here, and we try to find more and more vulnerabilities. And we found, like we said in the beginning, more than 10 vulnerabilities. Some of them disclose your private information, like a Skype contact list, calendar events, and Sadly, we won't have time to show all of them, but here's another example of a vulnerability that is very similar to the first one of the reminders. Let's see it. Hey, Cortana. What is the phone number of Microsoft customer service? You can contact Microsoft at 1-800-642. You can see that this phone number is actually converted into a link, and then clicking on it will open the people application, and here we have again the add a photo button, and you can guess what will happen next. Yes, there is again, you can see all the photos of the, all the files of the victim. Here are the, the victim's family. Now they're very happy. After this attack, they won't be so happy. And we can simply navigate to the folders tab, and here again, we will have the uh, interface that allows us to run executables. And yes, a cloud, it's <laughs> And that's for, uh, for the fun. Uh, we can also uh, call Microsoft from the lock screen and maybe report them about this vulnerability or maybe our attacker has some technical uh, difficulties. So... Thanks for calling Microsoft. So, <laughs> no, thank you, Microsoft. And I will let uh, Amichai uh, continue from here. So, yeah, that was a lot of fun. Uh, 
but we're responsible people. So we don't just go out and, and publish vulnerabilities. We work with Microsoft to do uh, responsible disclosure. And Microsoft have a very responsive front end for uh, vulnerabilities. So they were very interactive. They took the information. They came back when we, they needed more information. And their timelines, in terms of backend fixing that, were, were pretty good. But uh, there were times where they were forced to issue a patch, um, like uh, some like that the open sesame one. They had to issue a customer patch. They did it relatively uh, in, in a short timeline and did not complain about it. There were times where, you know, it looked like a simple patch in their cloud would do the work like removing the photo icon from the reminder uh, application and, and then solving it without shipping out the patch, without saying that there was a vulnerability. And from time to time, there were challenges. Uh, we talked about the voice of ESO, the first vulnerability that we've shown that was actually browsing over locked screen to unsafe sites. And what they did, they put a small server-side patch that would actually do a different action for the statements, for the phrases that we use to browse unsafe sites. Now, a year later, thanks to machine learning and a group of students, we found another state, set of statements that basically did the same, okay, because there was a root cause to this problem, and this is that the API on the Cortana client allows browsing to unsafe servers, and they never fixed that. So it came up again and again. And at some point, they rolled out a server patch for some statement. And a week later, they rolled it back because it messed with some other functionality. Um, so they had quite a hard time following on Uval vulnerabilities. And at one point, they said, OK, we give up. We will not tell everybody that, but we're not supporting Cortana overlooked screen anymore. Okay? So you still had the checkbox that says allow Cortana unlocked screen, but when you'd ask Cortana do something, they say, Yeah, I'll be happy to do that as long as you open your locked screen. I said, Yeah, now, from now on we'll only allow things that are safe. But it was like a cold cut. And and they didn't publish it. They didn't say we had vulnerabilities, so you can see the complaint from people. And they complained because they didn't know about this vulnerability. Hey, Cortana. Set a reminder. Sure thing. What should I remind you about? It shouldn't have been happening. Now, not only that Cortana is willing to accept our commands over look screen. Hey, Cortana. Look who's back at the photo. So even in that closing Cortana on lock screen, they had a the vulnerability, which is, you know, it's not surprising. Okay, it's not surprising. That's, that's a complex software. It will have vulnerabilities, which means, you know, you should have fixed the root cause. And I think this is probably my conclusion from all of this. Uh, it's easy to say, well, it's a classic case of security versus convenience, and convenience would always win. But no, it's not the case. I'm all for convenience. And, and Microsoft is all for security. They, they try to do security from day one. They said, we are aware of security. Problem is they didn't ask the right question. OK? They didn't ask the simple, stupid question. You know, can you create ransomware by speaking to a machine? It's a stupid question. You know? <laughs> Why? Why would you do that? But 
Yeah, if, if they'd ask themselves this question, they'd find all these vulnerabilities earlier. Okay. So you need to ask the right question. Everyone was looking at code security. Everyone was looking at code security. And I guess code security in all those components is great. We didn't find any buffer overflows. We didn't look for them. We didn't you know, find any SQL injections or cross-site scripting. We looked for cross-site scripting. We didn't find them. Because code security was great. But it's about how you integrate different components. And you've all mentioned it. Okay? You take a system like Alexa that has no notion of locked screen, and then you put it on locked screen. What did you expect to happen? Okay? So ask the right question. Look at the interfaces between the components rather than just code security. <laughs> Solve the root cause. Yeah, I know it's painful to ship out customer patches. I know it's painful to admit you have a vulnerability and register a CVE. But if, if they put the notion of not browsing to save to unsafe servers into their Cortana client, over locked screen, over locked screen, they would have saved themselves like five different vulnerabilities that we've reported. Same thing, for example, with the search window that pops up over locked screen. Why? Why? It's, it's a simple if you put into your client, okay? But, of course, it requires customer patch. Um, which brings me to the last point, which is solve the things in the right place. Uh, when we started this research, we said, okay, what's the outcome, okay? How are we going to help the world? Am I going to build a voice firewall for voice assistance? Well, I think the answer is not. The answer is we're trying to understand why system fails in terms of security and what is the right way to go about planning and designing new systems. Thank you. <laughs>